Hi, I'm Paul Brody. You might have heard of me. I make stuff. There's a guy behind the camera. You might have heard of him too. His name is Mitch. In between the two of us, we make these videos and we show you the process of creating. Thanks for hanging out in the shop here. We're gonna work on the cub today. I'm gonna show you what's new. There's a few things that new. There's a little bit of bad news, but when you work on a project, not everything can go perfectly. I know that, you probably know that too. I got the head worked on, so look, it's got brand new valve guides, see those? And, and they're bronze. I think the stock ones are made out of cast iron. And, and the seats are cut. The valves have been lapped in, so it's gonna go together soon. So we're working on all these different things so that pretty soon, hopefully, we can assemble the motor. Today we're gonna to work on the flywheels, but we're gonna do a little bit of what's new first as well. Here's the seat base that I started working on, and I've got the basically the shape done. There's been quite a bit of of Bondo work in there, filling in the low spots and that. So you can see how it fits. What the seat base does, it defines the shape of the bottom of the seat. And that's kind of crucial because that's part of the look of the bike. So it defines the bottom and it also, it defines the shape that the seat comes out of. Obviously it doesn't go straight up, but it's gonna come up and round and so that's it. Okay, when I, I made it, it was not a perfect arc. This side was too wide. It was kind of an odd shape. So I used cardboard and I traced it. So I put some Bondo inside and then I can grind it down and make it smaller. So now it's the same shape around like that. And what I wanna show you is while I was I was fiberglassing this. I had a plastic sheet over here. It wasn't actual plastic. It was a plastic drop sheet for painting. And look what happened here. I didn't get any fiberglass on it, but the fumes affected the paint. So that's more work for me. Now I have to sand it and, and touch it up. I don't want to take it all apart, so. Anyway, that's what happens when you work on a project. Sometimes things go well and sometimes they don't. I owned a Cub in high school when I was 15 years old and I bought it off a friend in high school. He was 15 as well and it was the first time that he'd worked on a motorcycle and he bought the Cub as a basket case. After I bought it off him, several weeks later or whatever, he told me that when he assembled the flywheels, he used a two pound hammer and he basically beat them together, which is just horrendous. So what we're gonna do here is to take apart this set of flywheels. I think this one's probably okay. It's got, it's got some side play. I can't really feel, well actually maybe there's a little bit of up and down play, not huge. So what I have here, I've got a brand new rod assembly. And when you first look at it, you think, what, what is that? But this is a coating which is put on at the factory. Let's just peel it off and see what's underneath there. Oh, there's a little, oh, a little bit of rust, but that's okay. That'll polish up. But, so this is the coating. This is brand new. This is probably 55 years old. So we're gonna take off all this, probably wash it in some solvent. Yeah, let's just open this up a little bit and see what's going on. Should be brand new bearings and everything in there. I guess these might be hard. There you go, there's a bearing. There's the needle bearing. And that's just surface rust on this side, surface rust. So that'll polish off. So we're going to take this over to the press. We're going to press it apart. But first, I think what I want to show you is I've got these V blocks. This is what I made for the Aramaki flywheels, and it's the right spacing for an Aramaki. But you can see here it's 
it's a little bit too wide, but we can still turn it and I'm, I'm gonna set up, I've got this all set up. So if I set that to zero there, Ooh, look at that. It's out 11 thou about. That's that side. Let's check the other side here. I looked in the Haynes manual, and the Haynes manual says that the maximum it can be out is 2 thou. So, okay, I got a keyway here, so I'm not going to put it onto the keyway. It's going to go right beside the keyway. So we're at zero. We turn it round, and so this side is out, what, 3 thou, 4 thou, something like that. So it's not straight. So the next thing to do is to wash these parts. But first I'm going to use some really fine, fine wet and dry paper and take all the rust off here. So we'll go back to the lathe and do that. In the wonderful Haynes manual, it shows you how to take apart a flywheel. You just saw how I took it apart. What they want you to do is to have a tool or make a tool and then you just crank it down. Well, that might work. I guess if you got nothing else, I guess it could work, but it's nicer to have a press, just very smooth operation. Okay, so that took off the rust. That looks good. So what I'm concerned about now is the sharp edge there. So that's why I set up the grinder like this. I got the rubber wheel on there, so. So even though it's a rubber wheel, you saw the you saw the sparks. So that's not as sharp anymore. So that's good. When this goes in, I need to line up this hole with that. So that's about where that's gonna go, like that. So we'll just go wash everything, make sure everything's clean, and we'll and we'll blow it all out. And then we'll assemble. See if I plug that in. See how it comes out the middle? That shows pr pretty good flow. Okay. I've taken electrical tape and I've, I've wound the tape around. It's plugged up the three holes. So now, when I put the salt, you, you can see it coming out now, can't you? Okay, we're good. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do now. This goes in, that has to line up with that oil oil gallery there. You don't put much on there, it just helps it to slide just a little bit better. Actually, Mitch had a good idea, and that was to use the vise, and we can we can get it going in the vise, because it'll it'll center itself a little bit. So let's just see what happens. Okay, now we'll use the press. Sure we got some oil to start with here. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, look, there's almost no side play at all. That's a nice fit. Okay, so you can see that this has been used on other flywheels here. This is a chunk of aluminum, probably 6061, and I've got a, a lead hammer here. So if I put one of the flywheel halves on top of this aluminum block, then I hit the other one and they should shift. So can you see what's happening here? Can you see that? This is high and it, it hinges around on the crank pin. So we're going to give it a little tap, just a little tap. That's a little tap. Okay, so it didn't move it because that's about the same. It's easy to move now because it's only held by about an eighth of an inch. Once this is pressed all the way in on the hydraulic press, it gets a lot harder to move. So this is a good stage for getting things to be set up. There we go. Okay, so I can't move it. I don't have play on either side. So they are pretty close. So we're going to go to the hydraulic press now and we'll press this in. Now, I did take a measurement of how, how close these were. 7 sixteenths, that, that's the gap that was there. So we'll have this as a guide. I put a little bit of a, an angle on here so that it would go in and that's about that's about what it was so look it, it's got a little bit extra play here and over this side a little tighter too so let's let's go set this up in the lathe now in between centers and we'll, and we'll check the run out and then we have to make adjustments. I know it's not going to be perfect the first time, so we're going to the lathe now. It stays the same. Nothing moves. There's nothing turning except for the flywheel. And, whoo, look at that. So let's set this to zero. So we're plus 10. So we, we always make a mark. That's plus 10, as in 10 thou. Now we have to measure this side here. So there's zero right there. Six thou, so actually it's not out, it's not out huge. It's not perfect, but not huge. So that's plus six. Let's go to the bench and do some straightening. Okay, so let's give this a hit. Right there. Then we're back in the lathe. Just, it's back and forth. Okay, so that moved a little bit. Now it's out five or six thou. And the high spot is, it's, it's still in the same spot about. So this is what I do, I just change it. Now it's plus six. So we'll, we'll go hit it once again. If we get this side straight, and then we'll figure out how to get this side straight. We're looking for two thou. Everything has to be less than two thou per side. So I know how hard I hit it last time, so I'm gonna hit it about the same amount. Sometimes this can take quite a while, and sometimes it just goes really smooth, and it just all kind of falls into place. Oh! Okay, so this is a really good sign. We've got three and four, 
and they're both in the same spot. That's, that's the best news so far. So we're looking for two thou or less. Okay, see here, that's our line. We got three thou, four thou out, and we are almost, almost perpendicular with the crank pin. We're out off maybe an inch. So what we need to do, these are the high points. We need to squeeze this right here in the vise. And that's, that's where this piece comes in. Because when we, when we squeeze in the vise, we want it to go, if I can show you with this, we want the force to be like, like so. So if we don't put in a spacer, it's just gonna flex like so. We want it to only flex like that, if I'm making sense there. So this goes in like that, and we can give it a little tap. And now we squeeze right here lightly. It's just a small flywheel. It doesn't take huge, huge force. So I'm not gonna squeeze it that much. There we go. We're at, we're at nine o'clock, if you think of a clock. A one thou. I'm gonna say that's one thou right there. We're good. It took a little while, but that was that was good. So yeah, we're we're within in the two thou boundary as specified by that magnificent Haynes manual. If you're wondering why I started with such a big piece, it's because I got the jaws in outside mode and I have to hang it out that much. That's why. Okay, let's go over and uh See if this fits. That's a good fit. That is our episode for today. How to, actually we haven't even named this episode at this point, but that's what you do with a flywheel when you have a new rod and a new crank pin and you press it together and then you have to align it. A Little bit of a fiddly job. Hope you have enjoyed being in the shop here. You could always like and subscribe. That'd be great. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us some coffees, much appreciated. See you next time. Stay safe.